и Астрип я Волга. Квадрат 3327. Existing air defense batteries like the MEM-104 Patriot surface-to-air missile or Terminal High Altitude Area Defenses (THADS) have been optimized to defeat high-flying jet fighters and ballistic missiles. Drones are fairly small and can skim close to the ground. That makes them relatively difficult to detect on radar, meaning they may only be detected once they're fairly close to their targets. And that's where short-range defense can provide protection and a final layer of defense, like a goalie on a soccer team. Along with it, large numbers of missiles can overwhelm air defenses with little concern. Not only are many existing air defense systems incapable of dealing with numerous targets fast enough, but their individual missiles costing tens of thousands of dollars may be too expensive and limited in number to expand in the volumes necessary to clear the sky of cheaper types of missiles, or drones in particular. Currently, the U.S. Army's only mobile SHORAD system is the Avenger Air Defense, a Humvee mounting two four-shot missile pods on its back loaded with FEM-92 heat-seeking Stinger missiles. It has a fast-firing 50 caliber M3 machine gun as a backup weapon. The Avenger uses a forward-looking infrared sensor and a laser rangefinder, but doesn't have an organic radar to peer further over the horizon. Instead, it can use tracking data networked from an external radar vehicle. This Avenger doesn't compare all that favorably with Russia's specialized track TOR missile system or its Panzer S-1 air defense vehicle. The latter truck-mounted system has an organic radar that can spot targets up to 20 miles away, backup infrared sensors, command guided missiles with three or four times the Stinger's range, and two super rapid-firing 35mm cannons. The disparity in performance reflects that Russia worries a lot more about being attacked from the air, while the U.S. Army has trusted the Air Force to take care of aerial threats since the end of the Cold War. But the drone and cruise missile threat emerging even from lower capability adversaries like North Korea or Iran is proving that assumption to be outdated. Stryker-based M. Shorad in February 2018, the Army announced that Stryker vehicles would be modified with sensors and weapons to fulfill an interim maneuver short-range air defense and show rad requirement. This is in response to a capability gap identified in Europe against Russian unmanned aerial vehicles (UAVs). With the previous focus on fighting in the Middle East, the U.S. Army had neglected show rad capabilities. I can't see anything. In future conflicts, it's feared that they would not be able to rely on air dominance to counter enemy aircraft. In addition to deploying Avengers and fielding manned portable Stinger missiles, Strikers are to be upgraded to buy time to build a lasting mobile air defense solution. Because the unarmored Humvee-based Avenger lacks survivability and range to keep up with maneuver forces and hold off enemy aircraft in contested territory, four battalions totaling 144 Striker show rads are planned, with the first battery of 12 systems fielded by 2020. The Stryker platform was chosen because it has better protection and in regards to size, weight, and power considerations, especially for the possibility of integrating a directed energy weapon in the future. The 5th Battalion 4th Air Defense Artillery Regiment, a subordinate unit under the 10th Army Air and Missile Defense Command, is the first battalion in the Army to test, receive, and field the m Rad system. This is truly a testament to our Army's commitment to increase air and missile defense capability and capacity to the Joint Force, and especially here in Europe," said Brigadier General Gregory J. Brady, commander of the 10th Army Air and Missile Defense Command. Just under three years ago, the 5th Battalion 4th Air Defense Artillery Regiment was the Army's first Shorad battalion activated in almost 13 years. And now they're proud again to be the first to lead the Army's air and missile defense modernization initiatives with M. Shorad. The 10th Army Air and Missile Defense Command is proud to be a part of this team effort and remains engaged, postured, and ready to assure, deter, and defend the maneuver force in an increasingly complex integrated air and missile defense environment shoulder to shoulder with our NATO allies. The addition of the Stryker M. Shorad system will provide better protection of maneuver forces at increased ranges 
and with improved mobility, allowing stronger defense of U.S. forces, allies, and partners against adversary air threats. The unit initially received four systems in April and is expected to receive more later this year, beginning its transition from an Avenger-based battalion to the first fully operational M. Shorad battalion in the U.S. Army. The M. Shorad Striker features a new turret called the Reconfigurable Integrated Weapons Platform combining four weapons, a 30mm automatic cannon, stinger, longbow, hellfire missiles, and a 7.62mm M240 coaxial machine gun. The AGM-114 Hellfire is generally thought of as a laser-guided tank-busting missiles. However, the AGM-114L model of the Hellfire, which uses a millimeter wave radar seeker, might prove appropriate for engaging airborne targets. The Hellfire's most obvious draw is compared to the Stinger, however, is that it has twice range at 5 miles, and hits much heavier with its shape charge warhead. However, the crew of the Shorad Striker will have to exit the turret to reload the two-shot Hellfire pod. One pod mounts four Stinger missiles, which can be reloaded inside the vehicle. The Stinger has a range of three miles and uses a dual infrared ultraviolet seeker and downed numerous Soviet aircraft in the 1980s when transferred by the U.S. to Afghan insurgents. The 30mm M230 LF chain gun, like the Hellfire, armament more traditionally found on the Apache attack helicopter, could also engage more distant targets with its air-bursting shells that can be discharged at a rate of over three rounds per second. The M230 has a maximum range of 2.5 miles, though its accurate range may be closer to one mile. However, depending on how the M Shorad Striker's turret is configured, it may not be able to elevate the gun high enough to shoot at closer, higher-flying targets. A superficial examination of the proposed Shorad turret suggests it may not be able to elevate more than perhaps 60 to 70 degrees, though there may be additional accommodations to exceed that. Unlike the Avenger, each Striker M Shorad will have its own organic radar built by radar capable of providing 360-degree coverage to track, identify, and engage both air and ground targets. This means that individual Strikers won't depend on the presence of external radars like the Avenger, and if they're networked with additional radars, they might actually contribute to expanding the collective radar coverage. DM Shorad The Directed Energy Maneuver Short Range Air Defense, or DM Shorad, the weapon system is a program launched by the U.S. Army to integrate a 50 kilowatt class high energy laser weapon system on the Striker vehicle. It protects maneuvering forces from rocket, artillery, and mortar, unmanned aerial system, and fixed rotary wing manned aircraft. Strategic Implications The Army's charging full speed in revitalizing its short-range air defense capabilities. An ever-growing aggressive Russia exerting its influence in Eastern Europe while trying to destabilize the NATO pact, the Army recognizes the need to protect their maneuvering units and allies from this threat. The strategic decision to test fire M. Shorad in Germany showcases the commitment the United States is making to bolster its defense posture in Europe to counter an aggressive Russia.